What have the isolator of adrenaline and Washington DC's cherry blossoms got to do with this bottle of whiskey? Find out as we put Takamina Koji Whiskey 8 Year to the test on Kanpai Planet. Jo Kichi Takamine could have lived a productive life on an easy path. He was born to a doctor and the heiress of a sake-making family in 1854. In 1879, he graduated from what is now the University of Tokyo's Faculty of Engineering. Impressive, but as we'll see, Takamine had a much greater destiny to fulfill. Takamine went abroad to study. In fact, like the godfather of Japanese whiskey, Masataka Taketsuru did a generation later, Takamine headed to Scotland. On returning to Japan, he secured a prestigious post at the newly formed Ministry of Agriculture and Commerce and was soon sent to the 1884 Cotton Exposition in New Orleans, where he met, fell in love with, and later married American Caroline Field Hitch. He moved back to Japan with her, had kids, and made a fortune in fertilizer. Now with money in his pocket, he moved back to the US and eventually settled in Peoria, Illinois after the Distilling and Cattle Feeding Company, aka the Whiskey Trust, showed interest in his Takamina process. This process bypassed malting. In 1891, he patented this process and experiments began at the Manhattan Distillery to put this exciting new innovation into production. At the time, the Whiskey Trust accounted for a whopping 75% of all US whiskey production, and Takamine's methods were a real threat to the malt factories. Protests began, and one October night in 1891, he was paid a friendly visit. A visit which consisted of his attempted murder and the <coughs> mysterious <coughs> arson of his lab. Takamine hid in his basement and thankfully survived and rebounded to eventually produce a maltless whiskey called Banzai, Banzai, which the Manhattan Distillery started producing in December 1894. This was the first whiskey pioneered by a Japanese national in the same year that Masataka Taketsuru was born. Sadly, the distillery went into receivership a couple of months later. The new owners returned to standard malting, abandoning the revolutionary new process. This disappointment didn't stop Takemina he moved to New York and launched another world-changing career, licensing his semi-eponymous Takadiastase Digestive Aid to Park Davis in 1894 and isolating and purifying adrenaline for the first time in 1900. So, if you're an asthmatic, you might well enjoy maltless whiskey, but you might also still be alive because of our man. He went on to found New York's Nippon Club and quietly fund a gift of several thousand cherry trees that were brought from Tokyo and planted in Washington, D.C. He died in 1922 and is buried in Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx. The man was a legend. But what makes that Takamina process so special? Takamina adapted sake brewing methodology to make whiskey. Grain-based distillation and brewing rely on diastase enzymes that break down the starches into sugar that the yeast then converts into alcohol. In traditional beer and whiskey production, this saccharification takes place using malt made by germinating barley. In Japan, those enzymes are derived from koji. Koji is Japan's national mold. It's been used for over 1200 years, not just to make alcohol, but also soy sauce, miso, and much more. The koji creates an amylase enzyme that breaks down the starches into sugars, which are concurrently transformed into alcohol, a process called multiple parallel fermentation. Propagating koji takes around two days, much shorter than the week or so it typically takes to produce malt. Koji is so good at its job that sake consistently has the world's highest natural alcohol fermentation, with some sake exceeding 20% alcohol by volume. Fermenting koji processed grains also produces fewer volatile compounds and the mash can be distilled with minimal cutting. Takamina was so far ahead of his time, he didn't live to see his whiskey dream realized. The man who rescued the Takamina process from obscurity was Michiaki Shinozaki, who's in line to become the eighth generation president of the Shinozaki Brewery and Distillery in Asakura City, Fukuoka Prefecture. They've been brewing sake since the late Edo period and distilling spirits since 1979. 
The Shinozaki team experimented with fermentation types, distillation methods, and barrel aging, then acquired a former municipal grain bunker in Ukiha city to expand aging capacity and ramp up production. Once satisfied with his output, Shinozaki approached the Takamina family trust. They allowed him to use the Takamina name, the first time the family has allowed commercial use for a product not made by Takamina himself, and Takamina Koji whiskey was finally born. <music> to make Takamina whiskey, Koji mold is propagated on steamed, pearled Turo barley. There are different types of Koji used in Japan. Takamina whiskey is made with white Koji, aka Aspergillus Kawachi, which is most commonly used to make shochu. It's nurtured for two days with the heat and humidity needed to optimize its growth. This is followed by a 15-day, two-stage open fermentation. In the first stage, corgified barley is added to a fermentation tank along with some yeast and water. Five days later, the second stage begins and freshly steamed barley is added. The total mash has a ratio of 40% barley koji to 60% steamed barley. The koji does its thing breaking down starches to sugar in parallel with the yeast converting those sugars to alcohol. The final product has an alcohol content of 19%, more similar to sake than the lower percentage ferment that typically goes into traditionally distilled spirits. This ferment is then double distilled in the same pot still and aged for eight years. Roughly 10% of this liquid comes from ex-Kentucky bourbon casks and roughly 90% from barrels made with virgin American oak from Missouri made by Ariaka Cooperage. It enters those casks at a barrel proof of 43 to 44%. That may seem low, but it's close to the standard that was used in the US around the time that Takamina was making his whiskey. And there's minimal dilution between post-angel share proof and bottling proof meaning the flavors stay intact. There are other Koji whiskies out there, but what differentiates Takamina is the exclusive use of barley rather than rice during fermentation and that double pot still distillation. Shochu heavyweight Honkaku Spirits began importing it to the US in 2021, and currently that's the only place it is sold. It can't be sold here as whiskey because the laws require that at least 10% of a drink labeled as whiskey be malt whiskey. I had to get it muled from the US by intrepid members of the Kanpai Planet community. Chill filtered and bottled at 40% ABV, a 750 ml bottle of this will set you back $99 before tax if you're able to grab it at the recommended retail price. It's been getting a lot of glowing press recently. Does it deserve it? Let's find out. Get that adrenaline rushing by liking and commenting on these videos and subscribing to Kanpai Planet. Let's check out the color. A lovely light amber with a golden hue, and I'm very pleased to say this is natural colour. On the nose. Ooh. The first notes that hit you are sweet. Honey, caramel, and obviously there is a lot of barley there. Behind that, there's a herbaceous and citrus character. I'm getting some lemon, I'm getting some grass, I'm getting some mint, and I'm getting some jasmine. It is quite layered, despite that sweetness being strong. Kanpai. That lemon and that hay grass that I described on the nose is there, translating into the palate, but it's joined by some vanilla and some nutty notes, uh, some hazelnut and some almonds. Hmm. Three observations that really hit me Number one, it reminds me of a few of the mezcal finished whiskies that I've tried recently. Number two, I'm getting flashbacks to my experiences with mead. And I really think bourbon fans are gonna love this, especially if you're more into the wheated bourbon side of proceedings. It's quite light and there's this lovely creamy mouthfeel there, but it's not coating. I think we have the 40% ABV to blame for that. The finish is short maybe medium short, that barley is there, joined by some sweet spice, cinnamon. Despite the short finish, there's a real Moorish umami quality to it. So, what's the verdict? Lovely stuff. It's an easy drinker, 40% ABV. I'd love to see a higher ABV version of this, and I'd love to see a younger version of this. I know we don't normally say that, 
as whiskey fans, I'd love to be able to try some new make and new pot of this to understand exactly how the koji has influenced the distillate. It does defy some convention. If you know your sake or shokchu, you're gonna find some elements that you are familiar with. They say those limit dextrins are tasteless, but they do contribute to the mouthfeel. I can see how some might find this a little too sweet for their palate. If, for example, you're not a fan of Nikka coffee malt, I don't think you're gonna enjoy this. But if, like me, you love Nikka coffee malt, then you're good. With all the talk of terroir across the drinks world and the introduction of the Japanese whiskey standards in February 2021, I actually view this as more of a Japanese whiskey than some of the Scotch-inspired output that the big players are putting out. And speaking of the big guns, there's a lot they could learn about transparency from Honkaku Spirits, considering the volume of information I've been able to bring you about this drink, should you buy it. If you can grab it at its $99 plus tax RRP, then go for it, that's not unreasonable given the cost of quality imported spirits over there. Hopefully Honkaku Spirits are working on ways to get this to Europe, Asia, and beyond. Today, we honor the legacy of a legend, Jokichi Takamine, on behalf of the lives your work has impacted, Kanpai.